Before we do get started on our little meerkat habitat today, I do want to encourage everyone who does partake in ZSU to just go into like ZSUI or whatever respective channel that you're in and just spread a little positivity. ZSU recently is kind of, we've had a tough day yesterday, but I really hope that the wonderful community that we've kind of fostered over here is able to really re-encourage and reignite all the love that we have for this little program. But anyways, welcome back everyone to Hope Harbor Zoo. Today we are actually getting to work on our Africa section. This is a section I was not planning to have, but we do have quite a number of species in here. We finally have meerkats, which I know I used to have them before, but I actually trade them away. Uh, but no, we have our meerkats and we have a whole lot of other awesome animals, specifically elon, zebra, gazelle, giraffe, a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. So we're actually going to get building for that relatively soon. But today we're going to start off nice and small with our meerkats. We're building these guys right next to the bridge of where we have uh, Moose Town, Maine, and in between the farm to table section. This is going to be a really, really wonderful start because it touches upon a section of the island that I really didn't have any plans for and if we can kind of find our way to include some giraffes in this section that's going to be really great as well. So you guys can already tell I'm starting to have a lot of fun with the new conservation pieces. These pieces are absolutely amazing and get this nice kind of modern look to uh, Hope Harbor Zoo. I don't know. I really wanted to build something very nice, very modern for our African section. I'm not really sure what the vibe will be through here. You know, we have like Anso Lifetime for, you know, South America. We have our waterfowl section that has its own vibe. We kind of have like an unofficial aquatic section and an official aquatic section. And we, of course, we have island of color but this section i'm not really sure how i want to integrate africa i know i do want to integrate some like bigger themes or something in here but i'm not really sure how i can go about that just yet so as we make our way throughout here i'm already starting to use so many of the new conservation pieces specifically the gutters uh i don't really build for gutters all that often as you guys can probably tell from city conservation center so i'm really hoping to change that this time around so i'm trying to add as much of them as possible both to the front and to the back, and really trying to learn how to use these guys to the best of my advantage. I know Lion made the beautiful entrance for us for Hope Harbor, and I'm really trying to copy that kind of style throughout the build. Uh, it's kind of difficult to copy a style when I'm not nearly as good as, you know, some of the building work that he does, but it's proven to be a nice little challenge. I'm having a lot of fun with that. So as we make our way throughout here, I have a lot of different things that I'm trying to handle. I'm trying to handle the kind of general theme of our Africa section and I'm not really sure how to actually go about that. I really like the kind of dark woods and stuff like that. I feel like that would be a really awesome thing to have throughout here. It really does bring like a nice kind of twinge of color over here. I really want to focus on like these nice chocolate browns and some nice bright oranges to really help sell that African vibe. I think it has like this kind of lodge vibe that I'm really trying to go for and just seeing the habitat right now. I have it on my other monitor. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm making my way throughout here and trying to add as much detail to the fence as possible because this is one of the big biggest, um, uh, it's one of the biggest advices, advices, I guess I can give when it comes to building It's to always build, um, relatively detailed smaller things that you could just copy on throughout the entire build specifically fences if you take your time with the actual fences themselves it'll all come out very good in the end i can't recommend you guys take the time to build some nice fences or even curbing curbing helps out so much i'm not sure if i actually show some curbing in this video but we'll get there when we get there but yeah taking the time to work on those fences is something extremely important so as we make our way throughout here you can see me start to manipulate the fences i originally had as well so i start to make my way and you know kind of copy the same fence over and over and as we are building for meerkats they don't really require the highest walls over here so i kind of make do with relatively lower walls you could probably imply that you know there's a bunch of concrete below there. I really build for looks first and foremost. Uh, functionality also 
is taking it's right next to it <laughs> it's right next to the looks uh, so i really do my best to sell these beautiful uh realistic habitats meanwhile still take into account that we are in zsu we are subject to consequences if we uh, don't really build all that realistically and i'm very happy that we actually do have that in the system because it really is super important to really understand when uh, ZSU where you actually need to like actually research and when you actually do get to have like a little bit of fun it's always a nice little balancing act between those so as we make our way throughout here, you can see me start to work on the actual habitat layout. This is something I've been doing a lot more often than not. It's always building the exterior first, or at least like the shell, going inside the habitat and then doing the exterior of the habitat. I really do love that process. I think it's working out so much better for me because it really does result in some really awesome habitats in the end. So we kind of make our way throughout here. We put a base layer down of desert rocks as well as some other faux rocks and stuff like that. We also use Nick's exhibit prop pack as a way to help it feel a little bit more pre uh, yeah, help it feel a little bit more pretty. Uh, I really want to have this feel like it's a nice deserty kind of area and have enough enrichment for meerkats all throughout here. Currently, we only have four. We have one male and three females, but hopefully once these guys get breeding, once the enclosure system is fixed, we'll have a whole little troop of them. We'll have a whole little family, actually. And hopefully we can introduce some more males in there, get some more genetic biodiversity, and just have everything be wicked nice and the end. So as we make our way throughout here, you can see we start to add a whole bunch of uh, color in here. And this really wouldn't usually fly within a realistic section. Um, I really do like to include a lot of greenery and a lot of plants in here as we make our way throughout here. Uh, and it's just something that's always important to me, just to have a little bit of color in builds. I know it's not really the most realistic thing in the world, but of course plants do grow inside habitats, and I always like for them to be a little bit more greener than what you would normally find. I just find it really helps to make habitats look so much better. And listen, in the end of the day, this is Planet Zoo. It's not a 100% realism simulator. If I need to take a few little, you know, few little details and try and make my little habitat look great in the end, I'm more than happy to take that because listen, it's my zoo. If you guys want to do something different for yours, that's totally fine. So as we make our way throughout here, I start to add some more enrichment and some more realism. So I add a couple vents over there. It can imply that there's like heating inside there during the winter because obviously winter get pretty cold in Maine so I want to make sure their meerkats do have a little bit of ventilation in there looks pretty good as well it kind of like has a nice little vibe up there and what I also do to finish this build up is work on the exterior and as I always say you guys are probably going to call me a leaf the broken record at this point but working on the exterior is just as important as the interior it really does help to uh flush out a habitat a lot more and you may notice I don't really do too much around the habitat just yet because I do want to have as many habitats as possible in this section uh, as you guys can probably tell we are on an island and space is kind of limited so we got to make sure that we are able to have those nice big habitats for our savanna animals like our zebras and our giraffes meanwhile still trying to fit in as many small animals as possible and of course, I have to give out a quick little plea for help. I'm not sure if you guys know any animals that may be able to fit in this habitat as well. I was thrown around the idea of warthogs. I'm not sure if they would be able to fit in here. Uh, maybe something else like a bat-eared fox, if you guys have any idea what may go well with meerkats. I'm really hoping to find a good, <laughs> good um, you know, little reference point for that. But still... I thank you guys for even stopping by in the first place. Hope you guys are able to answer that little question, but if you aren't, it's totally fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best. Make sure to spread some love and positivity in ZSU. Lord knows we need it. Uh, it's a really wonderful community if you guys haven't had the chance to really spread the love over there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the cinematics, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.